Well, good evening, folks, from the Canary Islands, Tenerife, the Santiago Martin, also known as La Ambarguesa, the Hamburg here in Tenerife. And we've got the USA against Australia in the final of this FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. And Liz Campbell starts things off with a swat of a Tarazi shot. Here it is again. And Griner and Cambage, you want to watch that matchup in the paint. Stewart puts up a long one and already showing you what she is all about. You know, Gina Oriema's got a really good seat for this, the former USA coach. He coached uh, a lot of these players uh, at the University of Connecticut. And Beck Allen drives in, misses. Now Tarazi on the break, and it's a quick 6 0 lead for the USA. And keep in mind, other than Epsery, the four other players, the four other starters for Australia are also WNBA players. So they know each other well. Kayla George left open, and her attempt rattles out. The ball goes off of Tina Charles's hands. Can Beige puts up the jump shot. You heard the booze when Can Beige touched the ball there. That's just going to motivate her, people. Of course, not as loud. Uh, as if Spain were playing. So here's Tina Charles, and she hits the jump shot, and USA have raced into an 8 nothing lead. A lot of Spanish fans <laughs> pulling for the United States tonight. I think there's no doubt about that. Talbot gets in, misses the layup. Cambage, she can't get it to fall. And then the turnover goes into the hands of Beck Allen. Nervous start for Australia. Haven't scored. They need to see the ball go through the hoop. Talbot. Cambage again. She gets blocked. And Tarazi drives down. And now Charles again. And I'm guessing Australia friends uh, breathing a sigh of relief. The shots that they have had, I mean, here, that was just a good job by Brittany Griner coming over, knowing that Cambage is going to go up for that shot. Kayla George's shot was on. Steph Talbot's shot hit back iron. They looked good. Now the dump, and trying to get it inside to Cambage. Yes, say. Now, Charles turns. Stewart back to Charles. Guarded by George. And a foul called on Kayla George. And you know, it's only 8 0. I, I think Australia's had decent looks, but remember yesterday. They were down by eight points in the fourth quarter against Spain in a hostile crowd, and they came back and won that game. So don't count this team out. I know it's early. U.S. have come out hot. We expected that, though, and you just kind of have to weather the storm, start to get in your rhythm, play the kind of basketball that we've seen Australia play this entire tournament. Jenna Hayes going to check in at the next opportunity for Australia. Edzery going to work on Bird. Charles for three. And now Edzery. Will this be the first points? And it is. And Edzery's looked the part, actually. Watch that matchup with Ebsery and Bird. 
course, a lot of both teams uh, have other guards, but you know the point guard issue has been a, a concern for Australia with some of the injuries, uh, depriving them of some of their key players coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lelaney Mitchell isn't here. That's who drives down the lane, gets it back outside. At three again, and good effort by Beck Allen, but boxed out by Bird. Tarazi. And Cambage fouls Brittany Griner. So Griner goes to the line for a potential three-point play. So Australia called timeout here. It's it's been a horrific start for Australia, and the USA haven't even inserted Deladon. <laughs> that's, that's the reality. They just have so many weapons. Percentages. Not good for the Opals. Second chance points. Jenna, you come high. Pass it to Jenna. So Brandella just trying to calm her team down a little bit. They've, I don't know if you'd say it's a nervous start. No, you know, I think she just felt like she needed to use the timeout to calm her team down, kind of encourage them a little bit. You know, you heard her say, guys, shoot your open shots. You know, don't hesitate. You're open. They've shot well all tournament. They can, they've proved that they can make shots. We saw it yesterday in a huge win over Spain, the host country. I mean, just shoot with confidence. No worries. Yeah, they did struggle from three-point range yesterday, but um, we'll see if the insertion of uh, Whitcomb can make a difference. And also Jenna O'Hay. So Steph Talbot has gone out, as has Kayla George. And Lana Smith also in the game. So three substitutions for Australia. Now, I'll tell you, when, it, when it's going bad, it's going bad. And time and time again, we have seen players slip. And unfortunately, they have turned the ball over or they've slipped on defense and the offense has scored. Tina Charles. Now Whitcomb, see if she can stay on her feet. Going up against her storm teammate, Sue Bird. Alana Smith comes right out firing. Well, coach said fire if you're open. And again, the ball just did not go down. Tarazi had the USA shot like they did against Belgium last night. This would be a much bigger lead for, us, for them against Australia. And Alana Smith goes in, and she's got good body language tonight. The Stanford Cardinal star. And you heard Coach Brondello in that timeout, too. So she said, set more drag screens. That's kind of where the post comes just running in, a blind screen out of nowhere. And that's exactly what they run. And Smith was open for an easy two points. Brittany Griner misses. Oh, turn around. And then to Smith, hustles down, beats the USA defense. Much better from the Opals. And boy, the insertion of Smith has been uh, very important for the Opals. No look to Stewart. She just plays almost perfect basketball. She really does. You know, I've talked this tournament how she has such an advantage because she is a six-foot player who can play almost a two-three for them. That's better for Cam Beige. 16 to 8 now. And good. D is 
as well for Smith. All you can do is stand there, hold your ground, and put your arms up. Cambage takes her first shot. Bird. Deep. And Jenna Hay couldn't quite get there. They had to rush it up because uh, Bird's shot had not hit the rim. And to Smith. She's going up against Atlanta Deladon, who's in early. Now Cambage. Back to Della Dawn. And again, another opportunity, and the USA are going to get three free throws here. As Jeno Hay called for the foul on Tarazi. takes a seat and Bunton comes into the game. Well, Rossi misses the first. A lot of people would describe Tarazi as the greatest of all time, I think. Uh, if not the greatest, certainly one of the greatest and one of the most exciting players. And also one of the most decorated players. <laughs> Yeah, I, there's not much that Tarazi has not done. WNBA championships, WNBA MVP awards, uh, EuroLeague championships, Olympic golds, world golds. Whitcomb for three. Good! Well, that'll, again, help the Opals fans breathe that little bit easier as they trail by seven. Drew Lloyd in the game, number four. She played. She's played exceptionally well for the United States at this World Cup. And then blocked by Lana Smith. Wow, what a contribution. And then Smith runs the floor and almost scored. And then Tess Madgen there for the follow and just gets it over the rim. Boy, Smith has been outstanding. <laughs> this is actually the most I think I've seen her contribute. She's played well. And now an offensive foul called on Brittany Griner. Well, Smith played. She was she exceptionally. Played she played exceptionally well last year at the FIBA Women's Asia Cup, but uh, has had a slow start at the World Cup. Well, that's the foul on Griner. Yeah, you know, coming into this game, she was only shooting 5.6 points, only making, sorry, playing under 14 minutes a game, and here she's kind of been the difference maker since yeah, she checked she has, in. She really has. She's been the X factor. Now, just imagine, and Aja Wilson, who is tied up with Bunton, and Bunton. Asia Wilson going to work, passes to Della Dawn. Good job from Bunton holding her ground. Good fundamentals from the Opals. I mean, how many times can you stop <laughs> Elena Della Dawn in that situation? Good size, and here's Bunton. Nice pump fake, puts it up and in. They've had a, a couple of balls sit on that rim for an eternity <laughs> before falling through the hoop. And Australia quietly gotten back to 18 to 15. Look, foul that far away from the basket is, there she goes, Bunton is uh, getting on the board. And they also fouled Diana Tarazi, who is shooting 94%. That was the pass to Smith, which she caught, just didn't make it, but then Madgen was there for the follow. So after missing her first free throw, Tarazi has uh, now made three in a row. Stewart goes 
out. And Leisha Clarendon comes into the game. Is it not amazing how good Tarazi is still? <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, she is legendary already. These last couple of games, she has really stood up for the USA. That's a pretty tough pass to catch. 4.5 seconds, this is plenty of time for the USA. So Australia gonna pick them up full, full court here. Now Tarazi, she's gonna launch it. There it is, and that's a little bit too high. She doesn't like the clock. Anyway, that's the end of the first quarter, and you know what? After a very, what appeared a nervous start, Australia battled back and trailed 20 to 15. Second quarter action underway. Lazy Clarendon starts guarding Tess Magic. Almost uh, picked up her pivot there. Sammy Whitcomb, Whitcomb rather. Now Alana Smith. And that is a tough pass for Alana Smith to attempt. And you know, Button is surrounded by yeah. three players. You see Wilson, Stewart, Deladon, and Oh, that was Smith missing from almost the wing. Clarendon, Deladon, and Jewel Lloyd. And here's Lloyd, puts it up and in. Boy, she is silky smooth, isn't she? She really is, and this UA, uh, USA team are just so deep. Uh, you talk about it every year when you talk about the USA basketball team. They are. Now. It's the USA reserves that are giving problems to the Australian reserves. With the exception of uh, Stewart, obviously. Delegon comes back up to Clarendon. And USA playing faster like they've been chewed out over there on the bench. It's impressive. They've got an extra bounce in their step. Sammy Whitcomb, and Button is going to go back up, and she's going to be blocked by Asia Wilson. So I think uh, arm belts through there on the bench for Australia, so they're going to bring back Cambage, Ebsery, and Steph Talbot. Here's Jewel Lloyd with that wonderful move that saw her make the layup. Second team foul in this quarter. That one called on Sammy Whitcomb. Australia bench out scoring USA's 11-2. Good help defense there. Lana Smith now over to Whitcomb. They fronted Wilson. And now the foul called on Asia Wilson. Griner has, how many fouls does Griner have? One. Okay, she's only got one, so there's not, there aren't any foul issues really for the USA at this point. No, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Coach Don Staley go back to Griner just to have some more height. And Pam Beige hearing the boos from some of the Spanish fans goes in for the layup. Remember, she really had it going with them last night. What about Alana Smith now? Boyd gets in and scores. Boy, I mean, the only thing I can say about Jewel Boyd is yes, she is a jewel. And she plays, she is electric. Stewart goes high off the glass and in. Back to a nine point advantage. Oh, 
Well, that was a tough shot taken by Cambage. Asia Wilson travels. So, you know, Asia Wilson was clearly uh, ruling the roost against Bunt when they came out here at the start of the quarter, but she's uh, doesn't look nearly as uh, convincing against Cambage. And sure Grindr enough, Brittany in. Griner is back in. Yeah. And, you know, if I'm this Australian team, you do have to get your star, your MVP going. But what you're seeing now is Liz is taking shots from further out than she normally has in this tournament. How about Beck Allen? They could use her firepower, but. And that's a little worrisome for me. And it's just because she is having to play against people who are taller than she has so far in this tournament. McGregor gets some early minutes now. And she didn't play last night against Spain, so she's fresh, the former under 17 uh, MVP the world under 17 world championship MVP that was played here in Zaragoza or in Spain. And Talbot's pass goes out of bounds. Remember Australia trying to bounce back from the disappointment of the quarterfinal exit at the Olympics back in Rio. And uh, good defense from McBeggar. So she's showing signs of uh, helping out the Opals tonight. Asia Wilson goes out, and Tony Charles coming back in. Griner back to Stewart, back to Griner. I think that was good defense by Cambage. Look at McVegger take it all the way. Goodness gracious! <laughs> She's like, hey, maybe there's an MVP in my future at the senior <laughs> level. Stewart just behind the stripe. And Australia, Lloyd, who is excellent, almost tapped that in. Beck Allen. And a charge called on Allen. Stewart, if she's not making shots, she's getting into position on defense. This is McBeggar. This is uh, impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. Cambage kind of sealed the defense there. She did the a great job there. sealing, making sure that McBeggar <laughs> wasn't going to get fouled, or sorry, her shot blocked. It's a brave, a brave fan, the super fan. Stewart misses and now up ahead and Talbot goes up and draws the foul. No better for Australia. Great pass from Cambage. And maybe this will get Talbot going. And you know, when we saw Australia playing at their best was when they were making, getting defensive stops and running. You know, you saw kind of the momentum playing a little quicker. Maybe that's what they need to do. Well, at the very beginning, of the game, even before the start, you know, we could hear Brondello telling her players to run. 24 years of age, Talbot, already in the WNBA with uh, Brondello. Yep. Phoenix, We're back to a five point game now. Oh, Bird picks up the dribble, interestingly. She gets it over. Now, Tina Charles, she's going to try her look against Cambage. And Cambage. And now, who is this on? It's on. Yeah, it's Steph Talbot. Talbot. Interesting, uh, such a contrast. Full house, but relatively quiet. <laughs> it's like it's uh, they're watching an all-star game. <laughs> Pretty long way to travel, though, for the fans of both of these countries. Yeah. Across the Atlantic for the USA. And, and that being said, they yeah, do have Australia. a good little following. Good contingent. Yeah. Both these teams. The 
as McAllen bumped by Tarazi. I mean, you know, coming into this, uh, Australia, were, you know, a lot of people were like, you know what, maybe they can aim for fifth. You know, there were some people that weren't even giving them a chance to win their quarterfinals. So the way they've kind of evolved, you know, the people back, back home, back down under, should be utterly fascinated by this open team. Here's Cambage. And her pass intercepted. Then again, you do have another GOAT, Lauren Jackson, who said, this Opals team yeah. could win gold. Yeah, absolutely. So clearly she knows how talented they were. And Coach Rondello talked about it, too, before the tournament began. This team has not spent a lot of time together. Coach Brondello joined the team a little later. They did have a training camp over in Italy during the year to get familiar with each other, but they haven't spent time, and that's why. Look at McBeggar going in for the, taking the pass for Brett Allen. That's why every game I feel at this tournament, they have made enormous strides, and now we're seeing them play at the level that they always knew, but people just didn't and had not seen. But you know, and also the questions at point guard. So it's right, taken, yeah. you know, it's, they've had to be a quick study, and McBeggar picks up the foul, but goodness me, has she raised eyebrows, both she and Alana Smith. And look at Cambage uh, getting them together there. And she got out there quick, quick enough to where Griner wasn't able to block it. The loudest applause of the night so far during this game has been for the Spanish players like Laia Palau, the captain, <laughs> who have entered the arena. I don't know if you to watch the final or to come through interviews. Of course, it was these Australians that ended the, the title hopes of Spain last night. Nice play by McBeggar. And then the block by Greiner. And Talbot says, yeah, my bad. I don't know what I was thinking. She did a good job of following it. She should have just pulled it out there. And yes, they do know, know each other very well, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, I hear you here say, oh, my bad. I think she forgot how tall Griner actually was. Good hands, Beck Allen almost knocked that one away. Bird from the left corner, good. Now back to a nine point lead. Hey, and Kayla George coming back in. Beck Allen can't get on track. She was excellent against China. Now she falls down. And oh, boy, goodness me, Cambage just ate Charles up on that one. Edzery. Talbot. You know, I was talking to uh, an Australian who's here, Andrew Johnston of FIBA World Basketball, and he was talking about how this Australian team in many people's eyes is two years away from even reaching their, you know, being at that point where they're competing in this type of game. So in a way, they're, you know, they're they, ahead of they're schedule. They're already ahead, yeah. And you know, a lot of teams after an Olympics. And for the second time tonight, Tarazi is fouled while attempting a three-pointer. Um, and that's yeah. what happens when she goes off as she did last night from three-point range. You have to be that close to her that, you know, I think Beck Allen's upset with the call. Oh, she's saying it was all ball. Looked like a lot of ball on the replay, but I mean, the ref was right there. And you know, as you said, a lot of teams reevaluate after an Olympic year. You, we saw a coaching change with Brondello come in, and really, they, they sort of planned for a four year cycle. How do you improve over that four years? You have to do as well as you can every two years because you know, you go World Cup, two years later is the Olympics. So, you know, like you said, they said they, they planned on a four-year cycle. How are they going to do in 2020? But, I mean, they're playing in a gold medal game in 2018, only two years after a disappointing Rio Olympics.
McAllen desperate to get going and knocks one in. It's a good sign for Beck Allen. Now Bird over to Tarazi. And Kayla George with the rebound. Ebsery. Somebody's got to be open if you have the double team now. Oh, hey, into Cambage. Shot clock about to expire. Ebsery has to put it up. She does put up a runner and gets it to go. Boy, Ebsery's been tough tonight. She has. She's really stepped up for them. I like how aggressive she's been. I mean, that's two plays with the shot clock about to expire, and she has to kind of go into creative mode. Stewart, back to Griner. And Tina Charles with the push. So Charles fouls Kayla George. Look at that. It's a Spanish, uh, one of the Spanish players. Here's Sammy Whipkin gets inside. Over to Jenna Hay, the ball is so slow to get to her, she has to try to pass it into the corner. Good defense by Tina Charles. Edger is going to inbound it, or try to inbound it. Edger in the corner, puts up a three. Razi. And really, where Cambage is making an impact tonight is protecting the rim more than anything. Ebsery. And good second effort there. And both teams getting on the ground, getting on the court. It's going to end up and going off the hands of Cambage. Deladon over to Tarazi. She goes baseline, puts it up, and now Australia have a little bit of time. Talbot looks up, she realizes, and she puts it up and gets the rim. It was a good attempt, but it wasn't good. So a relatively low scoring game, uh, certainly. And uh, Australia will go to halftime, trailing 35 to 27 against the two-time defending champions, United States. So second half action underway. Sue Bird had a three in the first half, and she has another one. Takes the lead back up to 11. Now Beck Allen, nice move to, nice to get it to Cambage. And Cambage, excuse me, this is and those are the shots that we haven't seen her miss all tournament. And I'm wondering if fatigue is starting to play a little bit of a role in that. And a foul off the ball. I mean, Liz Campbell had to play big minutes for them last night. The time she went to the bench, it wasn't for a rest. It was because of foul trouble. Maybe that's affecting her? Possibly, but. 
still a long way to go. And uh, in a big game like this, players are tight. And you wonder also, I mean, I know we're just starting the second half here, but, you know, I'm guessing Brondello will feel pretty good about bringing in some of those other players as well that did so well in the first half. If they get into a situation, and look at this. Oh, Paul Griner might try to dunk it. 13 points. Now the advantage, 13. So Talbot, it would be nice if she could get on track. Now the pass, Cambage to Beck Allen. And Beck Allen fouls Tarazi. And you know, you, you talked about the, the bench scoring a little bit for, for Australia. They outscored the U.S. bench by 11 points, 15 to 4. So Coach Brondello has to know that she can go to her bench if this starting five doesn't get things going for them early in this third quarter. And she's going to bring in Jenna O'Hay. So presumably for Beck Allen or, or Talbot. So it will be for Beck Allen. Beck Allen has three fouls. So presumably that's part of the uh, decision making there process. Charles backs up Kayla George. And Reiner was uh, putting the pressure on Cambage there. Get that rebound. Ebsery back to Cambage. The pass to Kayla George. Back out to Ebsery. A little runner. And Australia just offensively not clicking right now. The shot. They're making good passes. Tets Magin is going to come in. Offensive foul. Oh. On Griner. Here it is. Battling with uh, Caleb Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> that was dramatic. Maybe this. a little bit more dramatic in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Cambage goes down again. She has to get up. Talbot. And Cambage couldn't finish, but draws the foul, nevertheless. Oh, you can understand why she didn't finish. <laughs> The way the foul was committed, Button and the uh, Australian bitch trying to get behind Cambage. And this is both of them. Well, some people have been comparing her to. Uh, the Shaquille O'Neal saying the, Sha the Shaq of uh, women's basketball, and you would have said she shot those free throws like Shaq. <laughs> and good defense that time, and she's doing a job she at that really end of the is, floor. Yeah. And that's what you have to bear in mind. Here she is, and again, just not quite the same player offensively tonight. No, and give credit to the defense of the U.S. I mean, these two teams. They do know each other very well. The players know each other well. Stewart gets in and scores. Now it's back to a 15-point lead. George throws that ball away, so she's going to come out. And that was the basket by of USA, the last trip down the court by Stewart. Here she is. Look at this. Oh, 
Now the pass to Charles. Surrounded great D again by Alana Smith. Well, she is really standing out. Oh, hey, to Smith. Oh, that was not a good shot by Smith. That, you know, I think she saw the mismatch, Super guarding her, but I think she could have done a better job of sort of butt dribbling down and getting a closer shot at the basket. That pass to, oh, and Cambage just took it right away from Stewart. That, that didn't happen much to Stewart. Now the pass from Cambage to Smith, and it goes out of bounds. And all the Spanish fans, look at this. They're not, they're not saying anything about that, are they? She goes to the bench. And you know, I like, Cambage hasn't lost her cool. I know she's having a hard time on the offensive end, but she is really doing a good job for them defensively. Yeah, and that's the evidence right there. That shot there is not happening for the USA when she's in the Which, game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the game is uh, starting to look pretty difficult for Australia. I mean, they can they can come back, but it's uh, getting to be dangerous territory here. 17 points. So if Talbot drives in and falls nicely for Bunton. You know, I like how Australia came out of that timeout. They had a little bit more pace, a little bit more aggressiveness on offense, and just a good job of following the miss. Got to watch out for Lloyd if you're Australia. And now an offensive foul called on Stewart. And it was Alana Smith who was there to draw the foul. She has done a great job by them. I mean, keep in mind, this is a... Wow. This is a young woman who plays for one of the best university basketball programs there is in the U.S. and probably one of the best coaches in Tara Vanderveer at Stanford. Alana Smith, three, right on cue. Five quick points for Australia and now back to a 12-point deficit. Stewart posting up. Jenna Hay and Jenna Hay commits the foul. Aguil McKay also in the game. Stewart, 10 points, eight rebounds, on her way to a double-double, and Asia Wilson in the game, or excuse me, uh, Aguimike in the game, and chases that ball down into the corner. Griner, and this could be a four-point trip down the floor. Oh, basketball fans know who that man is. Is that Ronnie Terrio? That is Ronnie Terrio. What's Big Ron doing? Maybe Checking he out took Boris Diaz's boat here, which got dropped off for the women's final. Possibly, no? Well, this is a, a strong move uh, from Griner. And Cambage back in the game now, possibly to uh, keep that from getting out of hand. And all of a sudden, it's back to a 15 point game. Sammy Wick comes past. Boy, they just imagine Alana Smith, another three. <laughs> and talk about saving your best game. For the for most the important <laughs> time. Alana Smith is, uh, for whatever reason, she's just come out, played excellent tonight. And Agwumake right at the free throw line. So a couple of Stanford uh, alums getting it done. Coach Vandergrew must be uh, smiling watching this one. And now an offensive foul. And that is on Alana Smith. Yeah, she got there just a little too late. And 
if you're looking at the stat sheet, I mean, just the beauty that Dawn Staley has with this U.S. team. She has three players in double figures already. Only one for Australia are in double figures. And really, any given night for this Australian team, someone else can step up and be that star. Three seconds on the shot clock as Agunike got into the part of the court where she could, could get out of. USA probably lucky to have possession here. Bird goes out. Tarazi right off the bench. Did you see that shot? Tessa Levy open on the baseline. And Cambage. Well, and you see a little bit of frustration, but that's just frustration with herself. Look, look at that shot by Jarrett. And wow. Liz Cambage basically had a hand up. The only way that could have been worse is to get a four point do. play. <laughs> Dawn coming into the game. Stewart goes out. Here's the applause from the uh, USA fans. She's got three fouls. Well, there's a saying, if you're going to talk to talk, you got to walk the walk. And this is this sort of what it's about here in Spain. She takes her time, one of two. Now, good pressure there from Australia, almost forcing a turnover. Tarazi. Now, good. Cambage gets the steal. Give it up to the guard. Alana Smith, that ball is blocked. And Sammy Whipkin gets it. Alana Smith over to Jenna O'Hay. Good. Much better from the Opals. All started with the steal from Liz Cambage. So I know she's struggling on offense, but I really, really like what I'm seeing from her on defense, how active she is. She's just disturbing the, the uh, USA team. Problem is, Australia also need her to score. <laughs> Levy back to Agwumuke now. And so in her class, Wickham quickly on the break. And Reiner fought through the block and made the shot. And Cam Beige picks up the foul. Pretty good. Pretty good defense, really, from Cam Beige on that. Tessa Levy is uh, taking a shot from Australia, so she's actually out of the play, was being bandaged up, and comes back on. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> After Griner missed the free throw, and now she goes strong and scores. And now Tessa Levy's pass to a Lloyd. And you don't want to turn the ball over against the USA. It just triggers the break. This is Griner getting that chance to get inside. And now she's going to sit down. So Lloyd, look at the turnover battle, takes the lead to 21. And another free throw rebound. Belladon. And gets it to go. Big beggar in the game for Australia.
Levy drives in and is blocked by Lloyd. Lazy Clarendon. seconds ticking off the clock here in this third quarter. Asia Wilson travels. Flies in, just simply can't get it to drop tonight. It's incredible. Yeah. USA in command, 61-38 at the end of three. Away with one there as Cambage was fouled. You know, I'd love to see Beck Allen go off in this quarter for Australia. So F3 is back in. She gets in the lane. Every shot that they have put up in the second half has been a difficult, difficult shot. Not an unmakeable shot, but they're making it very difficult on themselves. And that has to do with also the, the defense of the U.S. Deladon for three. And another turnover. I'm eating all of your dry fruits. I don't want Laser Clarendon. Well. I think Australia really, they do have 12 offensive rebounds. So they have done a good job rebounding. I think they need to try and well, good job on defense again by Liz Cambage. Cambage, another block, another not in my house play for her. Mm -hmm. And the drive is good. The play from Ed and you know, coming into this. Oh, oh yeah, USA this beat US, USA beat Australia down the floor. And you know, coming into this game, you know, reviewing how Australia played, and we, you and I watched and, and commented a lot of their games, and I, I did question how was Australia going to respond to a game where. Liz Cambage doesn't score, have yeah. the kind of offensive production like she has been having. I mean, 27 points a game is, is it's going to go down in the record books of the World Cup. And I think we're seeing that here tonight. She's having a hard time. She is going up against a very tough U.S. defense, but she's having a hard time. And the shots just aren't falling for the other players tonight. That's a tough call on her in that sense as well. You can see Asia Wilson went down. She's, she's well into double digits on the boards. 14 rebounds. Five blocks. 
one steal. She's doing everything you're supposed to do when you're not hitting your shots. It's just, you know, it's difficult. And you need, as you say, you need those others to step up. Alana Smith has really stepped up tonight. But other than her, you know, the, you needed the Whitcombs, the Beck Allens, the... I mean, Whitcomb's only uh, taken Jenna four Hayes shots. Or Talbot's Talbot's to, to, 0 for 7. It's, yeah. it's just been difficult for those other players. And now a foul called on uh, Ebsery, trying to set a, a screen. Here it is again. Well, she did, she did come in from behind. Make contact on Asia Wilson. That's what the ref saw. Asia Clarendon. Once again, more calls to be excited about USA basketball. And the follow not there. And McBegger rejects Asia Wilson. Wilson says, Who are you? <laughs> That's, McBegger's had some highlight reel plays tonight. An offensive foul this time called on Agwunduke. McBeggar going right at Elena Deladon. Wow! <laughs> going up against the WMA All-Star and she didn't even bat an eye. She's going to be around for a long yeah. time. She's someone who Australia basketball has to be really excited about. Just wonder maybe if Brondello's thinking, why haven't I played her more? Jewel Lloyd. And quick transition. And is out to Australia. George on the baseline. And Kayla George is another person who is very capable of scoring shooting from the outside, and her shots have just not fallen tonight for her, or this tournament, really, either. And now an offensive foul. Is that what I did? No, Laser Clarendon. Yeah. Fouls are mounting here. Still six and a half minutes remaining. 21 point deficit. I mean, the formula is simple. You got to score and you got to get stops if you're Australian. And it would be the comeback of comebacks, really, considering the situation, if they were to pull it off. The pass inside, however, intercepted. Clay Clarendon. Hustles down to the other end, puts up the short jumper, banks it in. Talbot into the corner. Ebsery. It's just been that kind of night for Australia. I mean, you know, in the first half, I said they've had good looks. They've just been shooting long. The shot's on. They're just not falling. Yeah, some of them look tight in the first half, but now they're just not going. Asia Wilson. And George, good defense from her. And George. Uh, Makes the pass and helps up Talbot, who is pulled over by Jewel Lloyd. Morgan Tuck getting the game of the game, as well as Kelsey Plum. Five 
514 remaining, 23 point advantage. Spain winning earlier tonight against Belgium to clinch third place. And Talbot maybe seeing the ball go through the hoop hole. Awaken the shot. Yeah. Gwen McKay. Hands it off to Lloyd. And Lloyd rushed that one. Hasn't been quite as good this, this half, Lloyd, as she had been. But there, the interception from Edzery right in the hands of Lloyd. Side. That was a touch that missed that. Alana Smith, that's off to the left. And, you know, it's been a difficult night for Australia. But if there is some takeaways that you can think about, I think it's been the performance of Alana Smith. She's only 22 years old for them. McBegger. I thought McBegger did a great job when she came in. She's only 19 years old. Good pass. And Tuck gets on the board. With four minutes remaining. I would love to just have her play like we've seen all tournament in this last four minutes. Imagine, drives in, forces it up and in. Good. Strong finish. Lloyd, back to Tuck. She can fill it up, but not there. Smith inbounds. Imagine goes around Plum. Jenna O'Hay from the left. Yep, just a struggle offensively. Yeah. That's all you can say. I mean, uh, I mean that was seasoned that's a shot. campaigners. You know. Yeah. WNBA star, WNBA players. She's not working. Here is Cambridge. She takes the hit. And it's just, you know, it's it's just disappointing that it happened today. I mean, I guess it would be worse if it happened yesterday or the day before and they didn't even make it this far. These women are still, they're going to finish with a medal around their neck. They're going to probably be ranked number two in the world after this performance for a good reason. It's still an incredible accomplishment, especially after how I think they did in 2016. And, and you, they didn't even win the Asia Cup last summer, Jeff. So this has to be an encouraging and great performance, even though they are going to be a little bit disappointed after this game. I think once you give it a little bit of time to digest, then you realize what you did is actually pretty incredible. One miss hurts him from, from deep, and Australia look for more now. They're making some, trying to make some impossible passes. And here's Lloyd. She just looks so smooth, doesn't she? And then the alley oop to Jenna O'Hay. Plum pulls up at the line. You see she's a natural scorer, isn't she? Her first she two is, of the I mean, game. She, I think her senior year in university, she, she led the NCAA in scoring. 
She's known for her shooting overseas in EuroLeague. Australia haven't done well in offense. I think we keep forgetting that a big reason of that is because how strong this U.S. team have played on defense. And, you know, watching the U.S. play leading up to this game, maybe they're beatable. You know, maybe this is the year. And it's just when the game counts, and when they need to, they're just able to elevate and step up and put teams away early on. So it's not the first time that it's been somewhat anticlimactic, the final uh, involving <laughs> USA. I mean, well, you know, when, uh, when Brazil beat them in the semifinals, Back in 2006, that, that like awakened this giant, an eternal flame inside this USA team. And, you know, they, they've been great. And I think from, a, you know, honestly, looking at this, you would come into this expecting them to win this game. But I think everybody knows this Australia team, even though they're not yet the finished article for them, they can play a lot better. And that's, that's the, the, the disappointing thing, without question. And it really, this performance, uh, people should just look past it uh, if you support the Opals because they, they really have been terrific here. And they are on, they're on their way to being special again. So where do we go here if you're the USA? Obviously, you know, the next big tournament where these two teams might meet would be in Tokyo uh, in Japan. And who might be on that team for the USA? We would expect, I, mean, I think, I think Tarazi shows she's still at the top of her game. Will she be at the top of her game in two years? I think it's going to be her choice, to be honest, if, if she wants to be there. And what about Sue Bird? So I that think is Sue Bird is two years older than Tarazi. Yeah. Will she be there? I, mean, I think uh, what happens with the USA when they no longer have Tarazi, where we've seen Stewart kind of, it looks like the torch is kind of being passed to Stewart now as kind of the, the iconic player of, uh, of USA basketball. Obviously, Della Don will be outstanding. She'll be there. Griner will be there. They, they won't have any issues uh, having a talented roster. There's no doubt. It'll be interesting yeah. to watch and see how the Opals develop and move forward. And McBeggar and Smith, I think, will grow in stature over the next two years. And ironically, a three-pointer goes in late for Australia. That is the final 73-56.